Hello and welcome to the Chemistry Made Simple podcast. I'm your host Matthew Macario and this is the podcast where you get chemistry confident and we take you from point A to grade A. Hello, welcome back to the podcast. I hope that you're well and ready for this episode. So this episode is a follow-on from the previous episode where we started talking about kinetics and defined what we mean by the rate of reaction. And if you haven't listened to that yet, I would recommend going back and listening to that one before continuing with this one. If you have listened to it already and it's fresh in your mind, then let's carry on. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about the rate expression, and we're going to be talking about the rate constant, and we're going to be talking about being able to calculate a rate of reaction in particular conditions based on the concentration of the reactants. Okay, so let's think about a theoretical reaction where reactant A and reactant B react to give product C. You might find the overall rate of reaction is proportional to the concentration of A times the concentration of B. In other words, we could have the situation where the rate is is equally affected by the concentration of either reactant A or B. But that might not necessarily be the case. We could have the situation where the concentration of reactant A has more effect than the concentration of reactant B. So, for example, the rate could be proportional to concentration of A squared times the concentration of B, meaning if we double the concentration of B, then we would double the rate. If we double the concentration of A, we would quadruple the rate. Okay, we can work out that ratio, whether the rate is proportional to the concentration of a particular reactant, or the squared or even cubed concentration of a particular reactant from experimental data. But to find the actual rate, we need the rate constant. And the rate constant is given the symbol k. It's a lowercase k. Not to be confused with the lowercase k that we also use for equilibrium constants. This is quite different. The rate constant k is dependent on the conditions. If we change the temperature, we would have a different value for the rate constant k. If we used a catalyst, we would also have a different value for the rate constant k. So those two things, temperature and presence of a catalyst, have an effect on the rate constant. So how do we use K? Let's go back to our situation where the rate of reaction was proportional to the concentration of A times the concentration of B. If we want to know the rate of reaction rather than just know it's proportional, then our rate equals K times the concentration of A times the concentration of B. That's how we would use it. We multiply K by the concentrations of the reactants because the concentrations are going to change through the reaction. The rate is going to change through the reaction as well. So that rate has to be related to the concentrations at a particular point in time in the reaction. The next thing we need to consider is something called the order of reaction. The order of reaction is both an overall order, considering all the reactants, but it's most useful when we're talking about the order of reaction in relation to a particular reactant. The order of reaction for a particular reactant is that indices that we apply to the concentration. So in our equation, rate equals K times concentration of A times concentration of B, the indices for A or for B is both 1. So let's consider a reaction where the rate equals K times the concentration of A times the concentration of B squared. The order of reaction for A will be the indices 1 because we're not squaring or cubing the concentration of A. The rate is directly proportional to the concentration of A. For reactant B, we've applied the indices to. The reaction is second order in relation to reactant B. And then overall, because we have two reactants, one is first order, one is second order, we add those together and overall the reaction is considered to be third order. The overall reaction order is just the total of the orders of the individual reactants. So we've been talking about squaring the concentration or even cubing the concentration of particular reactants when we put them in the rate equation. So where does that come from? This is entirely from experimental data, from running the reaction with different concentrations and measuring the the rate of change. That's the only way we can do those. We don't get it from the stoichiometry of the reaction from the chemical equation. That is not something we can use to predict it. 
it's entirely from experimental data. So when you're given some data about the rate of reaction at various concentrations, that's how you will be asked to come up with the order for a particular reactant or the overall order of reaction. So in the past, we've talked about a different K, the equilibrium constant. And in that case, we absolutely use the stoichiometry to give us that indices that we would use in the equilibrium concentration. But we can't do that. That doesn't work with the rate of reaction. It's perhaps awkward that chemists over the years have used the lowercase k for so many different things, but please don't get confused between k, the rate constant, with k, an equilibrium constant, with, which is further complicated by so many potential subscripts that we use with that as well. One final thing we need to talk about is the units of the rate constant k. And that's not that straightforward. It's something you'll need to calculate for each reaction. So the rate is always going to be moles per decimeter cubed per second, the rate of change of concentration per second. The concentrations, of course, will be in moles per decimeter cubed. And therefore, the units of K are going to depend on at least what the rest of that side of the equation is, whether it's concentration of A times concentration of B, whether there's further reactants, whether there's any further indices used. So that rate constant will be whatever units mean that the left-hand side and the right-hand side of that equation have the same overall units. In other words, that the right-hand side overall, when we multiply K by the other concentrations, is equal to moles per decimeter cubed per second. Okay, so in our next episode, we're going to talk a bit about how we actually determine that rate equation and how we determine the value of the rate constant as well. If you've got any questions about what we've talked about today, then please do contact me at the best places on Instagram at Chemistry Made Simple. You can also contact me at Matthew at ChemistryMadeSimple.net. So until we speak again next time, do look after yourself and goodbye. Thank you for listening to this episode. I hope you found it useful. And if you have had value from it, do consider visiting our Patreon community at patreon.com slash chemistry made simple, where you'll be able to ask deeper questions about this topic and get more support for your studies too. So I look forward to speaking to you again in the next episode. And until then, do look after yourself and goodbye.